I am so excited to announce that iDriver Classic is now sponsored by Adrian Flux, one of the UK's leading classic car insurers. If you're looking for classic car insurance, I've popped a link to Adrian Flux in the description box below. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and last week we took a look at this particular Proton. There's only one in the UK and if you haven't watched the video, you kind of should because it'll make more sense watching today's video on this one if you've already watched this one. So we're going to crack on with this Proton today and remember there is only one of these in the UK and so the video that you see here today, this is the only surviving example of its kind, a bit like this one was last week. So we're going to, of course, take a big look around the car and we're going to take it out for a test drive and all sorts. And we're also going to talk to the owner, John, because if you're mad enough to own one Proton, how mad do you have to be to own two? So let's crack on and have a look at this fantastic 1.5 Proton. Last week, we saw the Proton Saga Black Knight Special Edition. And this week, we are back with another Proton. But this time we've got the Proton Saga 1.5 LE, which was top of the range for the Proton Sagas in the UK. But sadly, this is the only example left. So we are really lucky to be testing this out today. Now, I will put a small spoiler in that if you haven't watched last week's video, you really should because there'll be some things today that we don't spend so long looking at because we looked at them last week. So if you haven't watched last week's video, I would urge you to do that because it will make today's a lot easier to understand. Now, as well as that, last week we gave a history of the Proton. So this week, I thought we'd share a few facts on Proton before I tell you about the car, just to mix things up a bit. So first off, Proton cars are known for reliability. And this is no happy accident because not only do they have that connection to Mitsubishi, which means that they're well tested, they also test their cars, Proton, in all extremes of weather. And it's the idea that they want to ensure that customers' cars will work no matter which climate the car ends up in. And so the cars are tested not only in the Oman Desert, but also in the North and South Poles, which makes this an ideal first-time starter for the cold northern winters that we experience here in the UK. Now, my next interesting fact is, is that although Proton are a Malaysian car, one of the biggest Proton fan clubs is actually in Egypt. Now, coming back to the Proton Saga, my last fun fact of today for you is that when the Proton Saga launched in Malaysia, somebody actually named their child Proton Saga, which has carried on the tradition because they have now named their first child after one of the newer Protons, Madness. But it just shows you how invested Malaysia and Malaysians are in these fantastic cars. The Proton Saga was made between 1985 and 1992, which made it the first mass-produced car to come out of Malaysia. And it's worth noting, we mentioned in the last video, but we'll mention in this one as well, that Proton is a rough acronym of the People's Car of Malaysia. Now, the car and Protons weren't immediately available in the UK. So it launched in 85 in Malaysia, but it came to the UK in 88 after debuting at the International Motor Show. And over the course of the lifetime of the Proton Saga, over 1.2 million were made, which means that although it's a bit of a unicorn on the roads of the UK today, they were once a far more frequently spotted car and they're still enjoyed abroad. So they're still a lot more popular um, over on the other side of the world. Now, this particular car that we're testing here today, the Saga LE, was purchased in Red Hill, Surrey from the Shield Motor Group. And it was purchased by a man named Mr. Morris Bright, who owned the car until he passed in 2018. So the history for this car is still intact. And in fact, we even know how much it sold for. So this particular car sold for 9,294. 
pounds. You may need to translate that if you're watching from abroad. Now, I did forget to mention something actually when we were looking around the car, is that you'll probably notice there's a few little holes um, in terms of they look like they've been drilled into the grill. Now, I believe this was because there were some aftermarket fitments, like little lights and stuff, but John has taken these off when he smartened the car up. So the car as you see it here today, looks exactly how it would have sold when it was sold new at the dealership which i think is quite a nice touch now as i said previously this is the last le saga believed to exist in the uk and you're probably thinking what does le stand for and it's not very imaginative it simply stands for limited edition which got you the following spoiler electric sunroof special wheel trims decals embroidered headrests and carpet mats plus the power steering afforded to the saga once you got off the base spec and of course those electric front windows so really we don't actually get that much more than we got on our black knight which was meant to be kind of that base entry spec level so that's kind of quite interesting another interesting fact to note is the point that this car is painted Mallorca black, which is the rarest of the proton color shades. Now, of course, we covered engine specs and technicals last week. So without delay, I will reintroduce you to John, the owner of not one, but two lovely protons that we have featured in our two part special. So this is my Proton 1.5 SE LE. Again, the last of its kind. I am the third owner from new, and it is the, uh, as I say, the LE edition, covering just over 30,000 miles from new. The base spec, or the base model, is the 1.5 SE, and the SE got you things such as power steering, electric windows, and the glass tilt and shift sh sunroof. However, the LE luxury edition, ready, got you fantastic, extra wheel trims again non-standard proton wheel trims outsourced uh, it got you some lovely stripes down the side and a decal on the back quarter it got you a decal on the boot and a uh, and a boot spoiler and also the le edition got you some wonderful high quality uh, tailored floor mats and headrest covers as well pretty much that is the difference between the se and the se le Again, in my opinion, a marketing gimmick potentially by Proton. They had some old stock. We'll slap some stripes on it, some different wheel trims and uh, something different inside. And we will call it a luxury edition or a limited edition. Um, I have owned this one since October last year, 2019. And it came up for sale on Car and Classic one evening. Um, it's a funny story. Don't know how bored you want to be with it. Um, I'm a bit of a car hoarder, I have more cars than this, and it's quite dangerous when I get bored because I go shopping. Not shopping for food, not shopping for uh, clothes, but shopping for cars. Uh, one night, my girlfriend was at work, I was waiting, we were going on holiday the next day, and I was bored, it was around eight o'clock at night. I saw it for sale in Skegness, and I saw the potential in it, and thought, I'm going to go look at that. Rang the man up, eight o'clock at night. Hello, can I look at your Proton, please? I see it's for sale. He says, when? And I'm like, now. And he's like, okay. I drive to uh, Skegness. Um, I look at it. I buy it. I drive it away. I pick my girlfriend up from work. It's 10 o'clock at night in this. And you can imagine her absolute horror when she comes home to find that at 10 o'clock at night, after a full day at work, we then have to drive back to Skegness to pick my other car up. She was fuming and we had the best holiday ever. <laughs> That's the story behind this. I saw it, I fell in love with it. I bought it on a whim. Um, from that, I then fell in love with Protons, how special they were, realized how special this was and bought my other one, which again was super duper special. So when that came up for sale, I realized that I needed to have it. It was the sister to this one and thought, well, there's no, only one person in the world that's not gonna have one Proton another one as well so i've become a little bit mr proton uh, at the moment <laughs> but I, I i love them we've had a look around the outside of this special proton so i thought it was time to bring you inside now 
And the car that we took out last week, The Dark Knight, and if you haven't watched that, you definitely need to. There's a link in the section below. You will notice that this is largely the same. However, for those aspiring Hisense bouquets, you're not allowed to forget that this is top of the range because it says it everywhere. It's monogrammed on the headrest, it's on the carpet, and it's splashed across the back as well. But what are we actually getting for going to the top of the range and splashing as much cash as we can at the Proton dealership? Well, number one is we've now got electric windows. So I've got a control not only on the driver's side, which controls my side and the passenger side, we've also got controls on the passenger side for themselves only. However, we're still on wind down windows in the back, so we haven't gone fully electric yet. Now, as we come through to the dash, and I'm going to skip slightly over this, because if you watched last week's video, you'll have seen all of the dash, so we don't need to touch back over that. I wanted to show you some of the differences. Now, number one is, if you remember last week, we had an analog clock. This week, we've stepped firmly into that Casio calculator world of technology, and we now have a digital clock. Um, but old fashioned me kind of prefers analog. Now, apart from that, what else has changed? Now, if you remember, and also before I actually I skip over to that, is as well, the cassette player is slightly different in this, but really, once you've had one cassette player, you kind of had them all. However, it is worth mentioning that we do have speakers now in both the front and in the rear. Now, if you remember on last week's video, we had a blanking plate. Well, the blanking plate now has something in it this week and we have a dimmer switch. So this only operates to dim or brighten the controls in front of us. So really nothing else. Now, as well as that, we have got something that you never see on modern cars anymore, but is so missed by drivers everywhere, the humble sunroof. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you now. Now our sunroof in this is electric, so push up front lock with key and release safety lock from the outside. I'm definitely going to get this wrong. Well hey! So we've got that Webasto sunroof opening up up there and I'll bring that back. Now of course we've got things like the interior is different but by and large, it's all roughly the same. However, I'm hoping we see a massive difference when we take it out, because whilst the dark night that we took out last week was no power steering, in this we do have power steering. So what I'm gonna do is not only take it out for a drive, but also demonstrate what it's like to park up and reverse, because that dark night was depressingly hard. It was really, really tough when we were trying to maneuver our way around so what's this going to be like because it's all very well and good having plastic trims on the outside and having le embossed on the headrest but what's it actually like to drive now i've put my sunglasses on because we're ready to head off but first of all i just wanted to start the car up for you and it sounds just as sweet as the proton we took out last week <coughs> Now what we'll do is we'll shoot that from the back and then we're gonna head off and we'll go up through the gearbox. So I kind of wanted to show you what it was like to do a bit of a turning circle and reverse as well, because for me on the last Proton that we took out, that was kind of where the sticking point was because it just wasn't very comfortable at all. Now, we're gonna have another go at this. So already, look how responsive that is. It's so much better. As we come round, we've got full lock on there, and it's so much easier. Also, a wild proton there for you. And now as we come back into reverse, you can see that we're really not having to do much work at all. And honestly, I know that you don't get what as much as I thought you would get because that base spec was for me so advanced that really building on that was a bit of um, a bit of a challenge the step up from no power steering to this is massive and in fact if I'd taken them both out and I thought it's going to be a little bit extra just for that power steering I think I would have done it because honestly it's so much nicer to drive with that on now I think what we're going to do is we're going to head off and um, 
I'm going to shut up for a minute and you can hear us go up through that gearbox. And remember, we've got five gears with us today. And with that, we're up into fifth gear. Now, as you'll remember, when we took out the last Proton, we were sitting on roughly 13,000 miles on the, uh, the odometer. Now on this one, we're sitting on around 30,000. So with that, I would have expected a bit of a marked difference between one gearbox and the other. But you know what? These Mitsubishi gearboxes are pretty good because uh, I haven't noticed much change at all. And in fact, this is changing just as smooth as its Dark Knight counterpart. Now I'm a bit funny with power steering because when I took out that Rolls Royce, as I discussed with you at the time, I kind of said that it was a bit too light and it felt just a bit over-engineered. It felt like I had really, it almost felt like when you drive on ice and you feel a bit like this, but with this, I feel like they've really got the mixture right. There's enough assistance there, so you feel like the driving experience is massively improved, but not enough so that you feel like you're skating all over the road, or a slight cough will send you off into the nearest verge, as you do get with some cars. Now, I know that both the Protons that we've taken out are good examples, which is something that I know many of you will be at pains to tell me, but both of them have driven like an absolute dream. And in fact, as you can see with this one, with that power assistance steering, we're really getting into those corners and we're not having to massively overwork the car. And in fact, with that 1.5 engine under the bonnet, I know both the examples that we've taken out are relatively low mileage, in fact, exceptionally low mileage, um, but I still feel like the engines feel almost brand new, which you don't always get with things because there's a lot of 80s cars that you take out that are on low mileage, that are just a bit smoky, a bit clattery, and do kind of put you off. And you do think, you know, well, when people call these a banger, they maybe are right. But with these, I have been so, so impressed. I didn't enjoy uh, the last one in terms of the power steering when I was trying to get into spaces. But with this, I feel like we've had a real step change. And also that fifth gear is really, really needed, even at these lower speeds. It makes for cruising round quite pleasurable. And then I guess it's just, it's that enjoyable Proton experience that we had with the last car that isn't massively standout. So I can't say to you, God, this is the best car I've ever driven in my entire life. But at the same time, it's massively pleasurable. It's a nice seating position and you can fully adjust the seats in this. So you've got recline, which again, you don't get on all your 80s cars. You've got recline and you can adjust it very easily. The seats are very comfortable as well. And it's something that I discussed when we took the last Proton out. It feels like the materials that have been used to construct this are of very, very good quality. Even that bonnet, when we lifted it to get the under the bonnet shots, it was so heavy. You could tell that it had been made with decent metal, which kind of, uh, kind of is surprising because of course these are known for being a little bit frilly around the edges, um, which again is something that when we talk about why there aren't so many left of a car, one of the reasons that there aren't a lot of these cars in the UK is number one, they rotted out quite quickly. Number two, even though this is top spec, it's not the most expensive car that you could have bought. So, you know, you get a relatively lovely car for cheap, but it also means that it then falls into that bracket where it falls into low cost motoring. And even the smallest of problems can mean that stuff like this would have ended up at the scrapyard. Two, three hundred pounds to get through an MOT. Somebody would think, well, it's maybe only worth four or five hundred pounds. There's no point. So unless they had an emotional attachment to that car, it just went, something else replaced it, and so on and so on. Now, another nice thing about these Protons is that 
they have a lot of room in them. So you'll have seen when we looked in the back in the boot that we had a lot of room there. And as we drive, I've got a lot of room around me as the driver. And we've also got a lot of room for our passengers. Although you can tell the interior is slightly different on this one because we've got slightly less room in the back for our children or passengers in the back. It's always kids in the back, isn't it? You know. But if you are taking adults, there's not really enough leg room that you could take a tall person because they do start to look a little bit cramped. Whereas in the last one, the interior was slightly shallower, I think, because Tom, who's filming and is quite tall, fitted in the back far better in the last one than he does in this one. And I guess the only thing that I would say is, is that for me, I would want a little bit more for my money if I was going for top spec, because the drawback and the positive on these Protons is that the base spec is very well equipped. And it's something that Austin Rover did quite well, is that they would strip base spec back to absolutely nothing other than maybe a seat and an engine. Um, I mean, you didn't even get parcel shelves, for goodness sakes, or glove box. Whereas in the base spec on these, you do get a lot more, which means that your gap between your base and your top isn't as marked as it is with other manufacturers. So really that's probably one of my only criticisms of this car, is that I kind of just expected a little bit more for my money. Although you're definitely gonna ask me, what did I expect more for my money? And I wouldn't be able to tell you. I guess I thought the base spec would be a lot more basic and this would make up for it having more bells and whistles. But all in all, I think that both of them would have been a good value for money choice and they were popular. And that's the sad thing is they were popular, they did do well, people really liked them. They just didn't have that longevity and it's not a car that people have had massive emotional connection with. So while something like the Maestro looks really dated in comparison to something like this, it's lasted a lot better because people have had a bit more of an emotional connection. The weird world of motoring for you. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this two part video of the two protons i've really enjoyed making it it's nice to take something out so different and as well it's a massive privilege running i drive a classic and getting to test stuff like this because how would i do how would i test stuff like this without the magic of i drive a classic so i really hope you've enjoyed coming on this drive with me and if you're watching from abroad from malaysia hello from england um i hope you're all having a fabulous sunday wherever you are and until next time, take care and drive safely.